Here is what I actually did as a data engineer and probably there is no better time than right now to talk about it because almost every report suggests in 2025 that data engineering is set to outpace almost every other role in the tech industry apart from AI engineers and also a lot of surveys show that for every data science a company has to hire at least three data engineers. So the job is blooming and for good reason. It's a field that I know really well. I've been in the data space for more than six years now and I started my journey at ZS as a data engineer, stayed there for three years and then I went to Google where I worked as a data engineer for first year and then transitioned into an AI engineering role and for more than a year I've been a senior software engineer in AI engineering space. Even now I do a lot of data engineering because it's just unavoidable even when you're in AI field. Today I want to use all of that experience to tell you what a data engineer does realistically on a day-to-day -day level so that you can make a decision for yourself whether it's the right field for you. I'm going to say everything, uh, the good, the bad, and also the code that often used to break at 3 a.m. So let's jump right in. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about what even is a data engineer. So let's take a house analogy, okay? So you live in a house and data is water. What are data scientists and data analysts then? Well, they are the ones who use this clean water to let's say cook and clean and maybe use it in the dishwasher. In the final product, data engineers are the ones who build the pipelines, who maybe harvest rainwater and make sure that the water that you get out of your outlets are completely clean. Probably with this analogy, you can now understand the importance of data engineering in data world. They basically build and maintain huge pipelines that collect large amount of data process them and also store them efficiently. A data engineer's work mainly boils down to three things. One, requirements, two, building, and three is maintenance. Let me give an example. So a data scientist would come and say that, hey, I want uh, last two years of clickstream data so that I can make a user recommendation model that becomes your business requirement. I used to ask a lot of clarifying questions like, hey, uh, what are different data sources? What's the size and scale of data? Is it gigabytes, petabytes, terabytes? How fresh the, does the data have to be? How do I expose it to you? And generally, you would need to write all of these things in a design document. And you need to make sure that you get everyone on the same page before you write a single piece of code. Now, next step of the job is building. And this is always a multi-step process. Now first is data integration. So data always comes from n number of different sources, maybe using third-party APIs or relational non-relational databases, or maybe just through cloud storage or some PDF files or CSV that's not properly maintained. Some would have dates in DDMM YY versus others would have date in YY MMDD. So you would have to do a lot of data cleaning, quality checks, and you would have to do a lot of standardizations as well. Second is data storage. So once you have all of the data, you need a central place or central repository to store all of them and uh, usually this would happen in a data warehouse or a data lake if you are cost sensitive and most of the time it would happen on one of the cloud platforms. Third is where the engineering happens. This is where you write your ETL or ELT jobs, maybe joining the tables, doing some aggregates and finally getting the metrics that you want. Whether you're running it on Spark or SQL or Flink or doesn't matter what the platform is. So you have to understand the architecture of that platform you have to understand the programming language, which is often PySpark, Python, or Java. And uh, you also have to understand the SQL fundamentals really well. And finally, there's data serving. So you put it in a business-friendly system, something like, let's say, Snowflake, where a lot of data analysts and analysts could just write SQL queries. They don't have to worry about your complicated Spark or Flink architecture in the back end. There's maintenance and optimization as well. So sometimes, let's say, if there's a data spike, your Spark cluster will start failing. Maybe you'll have to tune your auto-scaling policies to get a with that it's an ongoing thing and i would say it's the most unglamorous part of the job you will probably see uh, day in life data engineering videos even i have a couple of them on my channel so it's not always as glamorous as it seems on youtube or instagram so here's what i did as a data engineer on a daily level so my morning usually started around 7 30 a.m this is where i'd have some coffee breakfast the first thing i did was to check my emails in slack to see if we have something urgent for the day i was looking for red flags like any pipelines that failed overnight if a critical financial report didn't update after having some shower at about 9.30 to 1.30 was my deep work time. I put on some lo-fi music 
turn off notifications and just get in the zone. So let's say if you are an order fulfillment team, right, you would build data pipelines that would give you some of the important metrics to measure the success of your team. You would calculate all of these metrics. This meant writing PySpark, SQL or Python codes, defining the data structure and setting all of these things in a cloud infrastructure. And this is where the real engineering happened. Around 1.30, I usually have lunch and this is something that I always order online since I didn't really have any time to cook at all. Again, at around 2.30, I'd resume working till 4. This is where I like to do maintenance work. Whether it was hitting the gym or just going for a walk, the break was non-negotiable for me at this time. I used to work in roles where I'd eat and sit at my desk every day and I realized a good career is nothing without a good life outside. So this is my gym where I used to go in the evening and work out and I used to take a walk from my home to gym because it's like a two minute walk. After working out, I'd take a quick walk back home. I do take some time to enjoy the evening like this, taking a coffee from my balcony. And then I go for a walk at night. There's a beautiful garden very close to where I live. This video was shot during festivities time, so it's all lit up. And then my late evenings were kind of more collaborative in nature, filled with meetings. That's one thing I did not like because I've been working with US-based teams. A lot of times there's meetings even from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. So that's not really great, but I mean, you can't really get away with it at least two to three times a week. And then when I don't have meetings at night, I either like to play with my friends or just chill and watch Netflix before ending my day. Now the thing about data engineering is a lot of work is invisible. Uh, that means nobody notices your work really until it fails. It's like being a goalkeeper in a football team. This is where we would have to drop like an email to entire company saying that, hey, we are late in our reports, we messed up in our pipeline and we are trying to fix it. Also, a huge part of dealing with that invisible work problem is finding collaborative tools that increase your productivity. One such tool that I would like to talk about today is an AI presentation building app, Gamma. So if you are still stuck on using Google Slides or PowerPoint to make presentations and proposals, you're doing it wrong because Gamma is a game changer and it makes creating PPT so easy. As an engineer, my favorite part is how it can translate complex idea into something really concrete and presentable to end stakeholders. Say I just finished building that data pipeline I mentioned and instead of a boring text document, I can just give Gamma a prompt. It will instantly generate a stunning deck. They just launched these incredible new AI image editing and animation features that help you bring ideas to life. Take a look at this timeline file. I can just click and I can just say that, hey, make it more look like a roadmap where you have different phases and it's more easier to read. You can also just edit images just by describing what you want. Here, I would like to change the art style. I would like to make it more realistic and I would like to have some AWS components uh, sprinkled here and there. So you can see how it intelligently created things like Guinnesses, Lambda, all of those things in my intro. I would just like to add my photo here, but also would like to remove background with one click. I can simply do that and edit my images. It takes a lot of your work off of your hands and it makes your deck look extremely professional. With over 50 million users in the world, it is the most popular AI presentation app in the world. Whether you're a student slash fresher or an engineer or a product manager, no matter what your role is, in software field, I think apps like Gamma are a real time saver. I'm going to add a link in the description, so don't forget to check it out. And thank you, Gamma, for sponsoring this part of the video. All right, now back to the harsh realities, being on call. So obviously on call schedule keeps on rotating. So let's say one week I'm on call, other the week somebody else would be on call. But when the week when you're on call, you have to just handle everything that goes wrong. So even if a pipeline breaks at 2 a.m., you have to wake up and fix it. And then finally, the third harsh reality I want to talk about is the constant pressure to keep up. So there are new tools coming in every time and even let's say take, take an example of Spark. The current version of Spark lets you do a lot of things that a couple of versions back, just six months back, you couldn't do with Spark. You have to stay up to date with all of these recent releases and you have to ensure that you use those features in your data pipeline to make your work easier. Also in interviews, also you can expect a lot of these questions on the latest releases. Despite all of those challenges, I loved being a data engineer and it came down to mainly two things. One was the challenge and impact. So I really like solving puzzles and solving, you know, huge problems where you have, let's say, billions of records or events coming in, and then you translate them into something usable. You're like an enabler for the entire company. And the next thing is pay and lifestyle. Let's be honest, like the pay of a skilled data engineer is really high. 
uh, compared to many other roles in software industry flexible work hours unless when something goes wrong so also you don't have to really go to office every day because it's it's a job that you can easily do remotely as well uh, allowed me to you know follow passions outside of my day job as well and one of those things is talking to you on youtube so the big question is should you become a data engineer well in my opinion learning the technical stuff like let's say spark sql python all of these things is actually the easy stuff you know what's hard and what separates a good data engineer from a great one and what helps you get promoted as well it's the soft skills it's the ability to manage expectations from your stakeholder ability to maybe move around some of the things in your timeline so that you meet the most p0 impact okrs ability to translate an ambiguous complex business requirement to a very clarified uh, and step by step technical requirements and generally just being a good person that people like to be with i mean these are some of the skills that would make or break your career and i get it learning all of these things along with the soft skills it could be tough when i started out it was tough for me as well it was like i was drinking water through a fire hose and that's why i've also created some of the road map videos that you can check out i'm going to link them in the description that's like a step by step path of how you can become a data engineer and learn all the skills that you want so don't forget to check it out are you still interested in being or remaining a data engineer or are you maybe looking to transition in or transition out let's talk about all of those things in the comment section below and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel it's incredibly motivating for me to see all of those things and that's about it see you next time